Hi there. Are you a database developer? Have you observed that in order to build any APIs, you traditionally use a programming language like Java, Python, or C Sharp? But what if you are not so great with these programming languages? Can you still build a RESTful API using your database skills? If this question has ever crossed your mind, then this video has the answer for you. Hi, this is Bindu Kumar here, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build RESTful APIs in a matter of minutes using Hasura. Hasura is a low code platform that lets you build RESTful APIs just by using your database skills. So Hasura being a low code platform is really very easy to use. Uh, however, there are two prerequisites before you can start using Hasura. The first prerequisite is you must be familiar with the concept of a relational database. Uh, you must know what are tables, what are columns, how do you join multiple tables in a select query, how do you filter and sort the data set, and uh, how do you add indexes, and so on. I assume that you are already familiar with these uh, database concepts. The second prerequisite is you must know what an API is, you must know how to consume an API, you must also know what are the building blocks of an API. Now. You need not know how to develop an API because that's the problem that we are trying to solve here, right? We don't know a programming language, so we don't know how to build an API, but you must be familiar with the building blocks such as what is a request, what is a response, uh, what are the request headers, uh, API methods, JSON format, and so on. So if you are familiar with these prerequisites, you may continue with this video. If you're not familiar with what an API is, then I would highly recommend that you pause the video and check out these two resources, the links for which I've kept in the video description as well. These two are excellent resources for understanding what an API is all about, right? So go through this once you feel sufficiently confident that you know what an API is, then you can come back and watch the rest of this video. Okay then. Now, uh, before I jump into the demo, a quick note. This video is all about a very quick demonstration of uh, Hasura and how you how easy it is uh, to build API uh, in, in Hasura. So, uh, you know, given it's a quick demonstration, I really, uh, you know, don't want to take you through the architecture or uh, the installation steps. So those are topics that uh, that require a separate video by themselves. So I didn't want to, you know, jam in everything into a single video. So uh, there will be, uh, you know, more videos that I'll be uploading in the next few weeks where I'll talk about the architecture of Asura as well as the installation steps. So in order to build a data-driven API, we need some data. So for this demonstration, I have installed um, a Postgres database on my local machine. And in that instance, I have restored a sample database called DVD Rental. Uh, this is something that uh, you will find on the internet in, in GitHub as well as the the docker hub page i will leave a link for this in the in the video description so as the name says it is uh, it has data about uh, dvd rentals right so dvd of movies so the data is uh, very well normalized into these different uh, tables so you can see a table for actor which i have opened up uh, here on the right side you can see the data uh, similarly uh, you have a table for the film or, or movie then you also have rental and so on so uh, this small data set is uh, is very good example for uh, for getting started with uh, hasura uh, so we can point hasura to this database and we can start building our apis so now let's start with the hasura demo i have installed hasura on my local machine as a docker container i will leave a link in the uh, uh, in the video description so you, if you want to try it out you can you can do it Right. So what you're seeing on my screen right now is the Hasura console. Uh, it's also referred to as the Hasura user interface. So this is the interface through which you can uh, build your APIs. Now for um, best visibility, I'm going to put this in full screen. And let's collapse the GraphQL endpoint and request headers. Now observe the Explorer pane. There are, there are no objects here. It says no queries available. So this is an indication that the graph, the Hasura uh, installation is a fresh installation. It has not yet been configured yet. 
So the first thing we have to do with a fresh installation is point Hasura to the database that has the data that you need. So for that, we'll have to go to the data tab and in the data tab uh, on the left side under data manager, you can see there is one database that is listed, which is the default. For now, ignore it. Default is a database that Hasura uses. We'll click on manage and on the right side, it starts listing all the databases. We will add a new database by clicking on connect. Now here, we will give it a display name that we can easily recognize. So we'll say DVD rental and the data source driver will be Postgres because it's a Postgres database. But please do notice that it also has support for MS SQL Server, Google BigQuery, which is still in beta and the Citus database, which is a fork of Postgres. It's a, it's a distributed database. So we will leave it at PostgreSQL and connection parameters. So I'm going to type the details here. So this, uh, these IP address, host name, port, these may be different on your machine. So I'll enter the username, password, and the database name as it appears in the Postgres, which is DVD rental. Connect database. So if everything went properly, on the right side, you should see this notification. It says data source added successfully. Now either you can click on view database here or you can click on view database here. Now, the moment you click on view database, what Hasura does is it connects to the database and it will list all the objects that are available uh, in the DB. So you can see uh, all the tables that we saw uh, in the uh, in the database such as actor, film, film actor and so on. Notice that all these objects are in the, in the section untracked tables of views, right? Let me collapse that, right? You, so you see something called as untracked. So what is this untracked on the track call, right? And you also see a track button next to each object. Let's track this actor. The moment you do, the moment you click on track, there are two things that happen. One, the table appears on the left side of the panel, as you can see here. Also, the table is opened up in the modify tab here, right? Although we are not going to modify anything. So let us click on browse records. And here you can see some sample records being displayed from the database within Hasura console. So you have a lot of options here. You can even delete the data if you want to, but we are not going to do that. Now let's use the breadcrumb navigation at the top and go back to public. Uh, here is where we started. Notice how that the actor table doesn't appear in the, in under the untracked list anymore. It appears on the left side. So what exactly is this untrack versus track? Imagine that your database has hundreds and thousands of tables, right? But for building the API, maybe you just need few of those tables. Maybe, let's say, let's take a number, 25 tables. So 25 tables out of the 200 tables is all you need for building your API. So what you can do in Hasura is you can, you can configure Hasura to track only those 25 tables. So what we are doing is essentially we are selecting only a set of tables and we are saying that, okay, I will use only these tables for my API. What Hasura does is the moment you have selected these tables or tracked these tables, Hasura constantly checks, Hasura constantly uh, checks the table in for any changes, such as if you add a column, if you delete a column, rename a column, change the data type of a column, add a primary key, remove a foreign key. So any kind of changes to the table are immediately reflected into Hasura. So that's what the tracking does, right? So now we have, uh, you know, we have tracked our first table successfully and there are no errors or anything. Let's go back to the API tab. So API tab, which earlier was empty, if you remember, under the Explorer panel. Now you see three nodes here, right? Actor, actor underscore aggregate, actor by PK. PK stands for primary key. 
And here in the middle, you also see this GraphQL section. Notice what happens here. So we'll just expand the actor. Immediately it says query my query. And then we'll say, uh, let's select the first name and last name as attributes. Again, you can see the GraphQL being formed here. Let's click on execute query. And on the right side, you can see the JSON data. Now, what is this JSON data and where is it coming from? You see, this JSON data is directly coming from the database. What Hasura does is it converts the GraphQL into an SQL that will be fired against the database. Database is going to respond with a JSON. This is now the API response. Now, how do we know that uh, this is an API? So for uh, those of you who are familiar with API, you may use a popular tool called Postman to connect to, to try out APIs, right? Uh, let's do the same here. So I'm going to uh, exit the full screen mode and uh, bring up Postman. Now, for a moment, let me go back to Hasura and expand this request headers and GraphQL endpoint. Notice the GraphQL endpoint here, right? So this is the localhost port 8765 and V1 GraphQL. And uh, observe, this is the payload, right? So let's switch to Postman. And here uh, you can see the same URL, right, with a post method. And this is the payload. Notice how that I'm only sending the last name here, not the first name, right? So when I click on send, it returns the data, right? Just like in the console. Now I can type in first name. So first name and last name appear together, right? So this essentially becomes my API endpoint. Now the output of which is controlled by the input parameter, right? So based on the payload or the request, the response will vary. So this is what Hasura does. And if you observed, it took maybe a few minutes to, to connect Hasura to a database and to track a table, right? But uh, that's not all. Hasura can do a lot more. Now, before we can look at uh, an advanced scenario, you must be wondering how is Hasura able to get the data, right? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. It converts the GraphQL into an SQL. Now, where can we see this SQL? So here is the analyze button in the console. So when you click on analyze, you see a generated SQL. Now in this SQL, if you observe closely, you can see the selections you have made. We have added the first name, last name uh, from the actor table. So this is a machine generated SQL. Now let's see if this SQL will change if we add another column. Let's add the actor ID as the last column here. We'll, click, we'll run it once. We can see the actor ID. I'll click on analyze and there you go. Right. So the at, at core, what Hasura does is it converts the GraphQL into a Postgres compatible SQL. And it's very, uh, it's a machine generated SQL. So it is highly optimized uh, SQL. And for those of you who are familiar with the execution plan of a database, you can see the execution plan as well. So Hasura will also tell you, okay, you know, what does the plan look like, right? Now I'm going to show you another thing. Let us copy this SQL and we will uh, take it to the database. So I'm, I'm using the, the dbeaver tool. I'm going to copy paste here and run you can see the data here right which appears as one big json right so i ideally we are we are printing the the list of all actors so if you wrote a normal select query you would have seen multiple records but notice how that all the records are being aggregated into a single json now that's the power of hasura hasura connects to the database and it directly gets the JSON from the database. 
Hasura does not do any conversion of the data. Now let's uh, look at um, an advanced scenario. So here uh, in the in the DVD rental database, there are there are two tables, film, which is nothing but a list of movies, right? And there is an actor table with the list of actors. But where is the association between a film and an actor? Well, that is in the film underscore actor table. So this is the bridge table. It it captures the many to many relationship between uh, between the actor table and the the film table, right? Now here I have I also have a query that you can see. I'm selecting the actor's first name and last name and the title of the movie. The join looks something like this: actor joined with the film actor table on actor ID, and then the film actor table joined with the film table on the film ID where last name like Gable. So I've applied a filter here and the order by title description. And you can see the data appear here as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to see if the same logic can be implemented in Hasura such that an Hasura API returns this data, but not as a tabular data. It should return the data as a JSON because it's a API. So let's see how to go about that. So we are back in the Hasura console. Let's go to the data tab. And uh, here we have already tracked the actor table. Now looking at the SQL, it's very clear that there are two more tables that we need to track. Uh, one is the film and the second is the film actor table. So I'm going to track both these tables one by one. All right. So you can see from the left side that I have tracked the actor film and the film actor table. But is this enough? What is missing between the SQL and here is in SQL, we were able to join the two tables. But how do you join tables in Hasura? Right. So let's go to the actor table. In the actor table, you will see something called as relationships. And in relation, you can add a relation that says this table is associated with which table on which column, right? And here Hasura is quite smart. It will look at your database schema or metadata. The moment it detects a primary key or a foreign key, it will give suggestions. Now, as you can see here, there is an array relationship it's suggesting. Array relationship simply means it's a one is to many uh, kind of a relation. So here, the film actor dot actor ID, right, uh, which is n is to one relation on the actor table. So we'll just click on add, and it's giving, it's suggesting a name. You can change it if you want to, but I'll just leave it as is. Click on save. So now there is a relation from the actor table to the film table. Now we, we need to add few more relations, but before that, let's just go back to the API tab and see how this impacts uh, this particular uh, explorer, right? So we have, uh, we have the actor, I'll expand the actor. And uh, here we did not have this film underscore actors or film actor ag aggregate nodes before. Notice that they have come here. Why? Because now they are representing the relation uh, that you can traverse from within the actor node. Okay. Now let's say, do the same thing for film. If, if we expand film, notice that all the columns are here. All the operators are here, such as where, order by, offset, limit, and so on. But you don't see any relation going outside of the film. Right. Please do, please do make a note of it. Now let's go back to the data tab. The second table is film. Here we'll go to the relation. Now I'm just going to go by the suggestion. Click on add suggestion. So the suggestion is between the film table and the film actor table. You click on save. Now that is done. Let's go back to the API tab. And here now you can observe the film underscore actors appear here as well. So every relation that you add appears here. But now the question is, how do we make use of these relations? 
right okay so what we'll do we'll just uh, clear up the query here let let us expand the actor we will add the first name and last name of the actor and uh, let's limit the number of records right so we will just uh, give a limit of let's say two actors to begin with let's try it out now you can see uh, two records appearing here now we want to display the movies that these actors have been part of now how do we do that within the actor node we will have to traverse the relation to the film underscore actors table and from here we will have to take the film id and the actor id let's say now here you can see the id of the film that they have acted in but there is no film in itself right there is no film name here it just shows the film id and the actor id now what's missing here is the relation from film actors to the film now let's go back to the data tab well, you may be wondering we have already added a relation from the film table to the film actor table but why isn't it appearing there well the relations in hasura are directional right meaning if you add a relation from film to film actor it will only be available in the film node it will not be available in the film actor node okay so i'll, I'll show you what i'm talking about so we have seen that the film the film table has a relation the actor table also has a relation right but if i go to the film actor table and click on relation you see there are no existing relationships so relationship is directional so if you want traversals from both sides you will have to add the relationship twice so let's go ahead and add that so i'll just uh, make use of these suggestions here okay so now it's done if you go to the api tab now what was not there before appears here right so under film actors now we can also see the relation to the film right if we expand that we now have access to all the film related attributes right so from here let's um, select the name which is the title right and i no longer need this film id and actor id so i'm going to uncheck that film id and um, actor id over here okay right. there you go now this is how you can build an hasura api that combines data from multiple tables so the prerequisite is that there must be a column on which you can join the two tables now let's expand the same example and look at a few more features of hasura so the first thing we want to do is let us sort the uh, the data here uh, by the title in descending order so for that what we have to do is we have to look at the node that gives us the title attribute right so that's under film and the film is under the film actors node if you can observe the hierarchy here and in the film actors node you see an order by operator expand that it will list all the attributes where it's possible uh, to uh, to sort and it also gives the nodes as well so the film actors has links to the actor as well as the film so expand the film and from here you can select the title do observe that all these operators appear in a different color uh, i think it's either pink or magenta whereas the attributes themselves uh, appear in blue so here i have checked the title and the moment i do it you can see the change appear in the graphql as well so it's adding um, the condition here so order by uh, the film title in ascending but uh, we want a descending order so i'll select it to descending order so i'll click on execute query and you can see now the movie uh, the the entire result set is sorted by the title in descending order but what if uh, we want to 
display maybe just the first three values because there are too many values here uh, too many movie uh, movies being listed here that also can be done we just have to uh, apply a limit on the film actors uh, which is here so let's give it a limit of two all right so what we are doing is we are displaying two actors and for both those actors we are just displaying uh, the two movies that they have acted in uh, and these movies are selected based on the descending order of the title in which they are sorted and we are just picking the top two right so this is an example of um, of how anything that can be done in sql such as order by sort by those things can be applied in hasura as well now you know don't do not get ideas that everything that's done in the sql meaning you can do a lot of group buys concatenation and so on those operations are still not supported in hasura right okay now um, one thing that we have to check is we have this graphql right i'll i can i'll copy this graphql uh, which is the payload let me go to postman and in the postman i'm just going to change this payload to this new value i'll click on send and we can see the data here right now this gives us the ability to get the response based on the request that we sent right suppose that we don't want the last name we can just uh, uh, remove it from the payload and that's that will be excluded from the response as well right so you can see but in many cases we want to we want to uh, let's say limit this right we we just want to uh, fix the number of attributes that will be there in an api so for that uh, we can convert this graphql into a rest endpoint and it's pretty easy so go back to the hasura console now here we here we have this uh, this graphql there is a button called rest and you can also uh, see it at the top here okay but let me just click on this rest button and it's asking for a name so uh, let's give this a name fetch to actors i'll give the same as a description and the location also will be fetched to actors and the method will be post uh, sorry let me make it a get method and here you can already see the graphql so it took what what we had in the in the api tab and we'll say create endpoint now you can see on the top right it says successfully created rest endpoint and uh, here is endpoint right so i'm going to copy this let's go back to postman and uh, let's create a new request which is a get request i'll just click on send and you will get the same data here and notice that here we are not sending any payload it's all empty right so hasura also supports this uh, uh, you know this feature of converting a graphql into a rest endpoint so that you have complete control on which attributes are included or not included so you can choose what is beneficial for you do you want to expose a graphql endpoint where uh, users can play around or where the clients can play around with the with the payload or do you want to fix uh, the response in which case you can convert it into a rest endpoint so with this i will stop the demo of, of hasura so quick recap we have seen how hasura can be used to build apis data driven apis very quickly just by pointing to a database if you observed the developer journey so far there was not a single point in time where i had to write any complex code i was just using my database skills right so you just point hasura to the database that has the data and then uh, using the data tab you can track the tables untrack the tables uh, you can define the relationships between them and then using the console you can uh, type the graphql and and from there you can even convert it into a rest endpoint 
So altogether, if this were to be programmed in, let's say, a Java application, this would have taken anywhere between four to five hours because in Java, you have to write POJO classes, uh, Hibernate and whatnot, right? Even if you use any ORM uh, uh, tools, you still have to write a lot of coding where you have to code these classes. You have to define each of these objects like what is an actor, what is a film and, and so on. So Hasura completely takes away that effort. Why? Because Hasura directly uses your data model itself. So the prerequisite is you must be familiar with the database. You must be familiar with a data model and you must be familiar with the building blocks of an API. If you know these three things, you can build APIs in Hasura very, very quickly. So before you go, I just want to show you that the Hasura website is hasura.io. Uh, I'll, I'll you know, keep a link of this in the video description. Their documentation is just amazing. It's very well maintained. You can go through this documentation and I think that's an excellent resource for getting started with Hasura. You really don't need anything else apart from that. And uh, please do remember to go to their Git page as well github page and uh, leave them a star as i did just now because this is a tool that i myself was waiting for a number of years i really wanted to build apis but i simply could not because i was not very uh, proficient in these programming languages so i was limited a lot of ways before hasura but now with hasura it's very quick to build an api so we are at the end of this video so that's all about a quick demonstration of Hasura. So we have seen how easy it is to build APIs. But Hasura is not only about APIs. I mean, it has a lot of features that help you build robust data-driven APIs. So I'll be covering these individual topics in separate videos as we go along. I hope you like this video. Uh, please do leave your comments on what you think about, uh, about Hasura and uh, about this video as well. And uh, to make sure you don't miss any of my uh, future uploads, please do subscribe and hit the notification icon. Thank you. Have a great day. Hi there. I'll just take a minute to tell you about the video catalog sheet. Based on your feedback, I have now made it easy for you to discover my videos with this Google Sheet. This Google Sheet will serve as a catalog of videos where the videos are grouped by categories. This will help you find the most relevant video easily. The link for the sheet is in the video description. Thank you for watching.